All right, everybody. This is William Hall, William Hall Auto Interiors in Dublin, Georgia. Uh, it's about 11 o'clock. I think that's what we got. Um, anyway, seems like I can't do these videos sometimes in the daytime because so many customers come in here. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this um, this video here. It's like a 2000. Uh, it's like a 2000 model Chevy truck seat. It's kind of a basic truck seat. It ain't real fancy. But for the people that's wanting to learn, sometimes it's not got to be fancy to try to show you what's going on. So we're going to come right on over here. Probably right about here, maybe. Something like that right there. All right. You can see I've already done took the boxing off. Sometimes on these live videos, you got to kind of speed it up a little bit because it's a little bit too, uh, it's a little bit too boring to watch me cut all this stuff apart. So I went ahead on and done it. But I'm gonna to explain to you some of the stuff that, that I was doing out here. So, like, I just cut the boxing off of it. I have already steamed the foam. This part right here, uh, I still got to fix this place right here. It's just a little bitty spot. Uh, the foam was busted up, so I'm just going to show you that. You can see, I already fixed that. Not too bad, though. Because you see this part right here, it's not too bad. Because it's, uh, it's only got one little place that you can stick your finger in there. So, uh, what I'm going to do is, is a lot of times I'll be doing two or three things at a time. Let you. Uh, I said a lot of times I'll be doing two or three things at a time, and I do I work like that, you know, to where I can. Uh, okay, now I'm gonna let you back down. All uh, right, that's just the way I work sometimes, uh, because I can't I can't get one little thing started and then quit on it and go do something else. I mean, I, you know, I, I I don't just sit around while some glue's drying or something like that. And and I'm gonna kind of explain to you what I'm doing what, and how I'm doing it and why I'm doing it. Uh, this seat frame right here, this seat frame was rusty. I mean, it looked like it come out of the swamp or something, but I took a sandblast and painted it and I didn't have to paint this side because it's not going to be seen that much. But these pieces right here, who is that? Jenny, <laughs> you're up this late. <laughs> All right. These pieces right here is where these springs right here go. Like this. All right. They go right in here. And that's what holds the spring bed in. And that's called a cheese cutter. So this right here, I had to weld these up because they had them pulled out. Somebody big was sitting in the seat for a long, long time, and what it done was it just pulled them through. So I welded all that up. If you work on this kind of seat, you'll see that, that you had to do that. Uh, but like I said, as I'm doing some of it, I'm just gonna go ahead and do, do, do part of it as I go. So, like, Like this, well, my cord ain't really long. My cord ain't too long, but maybe I can. I had to cut a hole in the back side of my knife because the fan blade broke in there. I had to dig that out so it don't make much noise. All right, so you just cut the foam out, cut the hole out.
come right here. I'm just gonna cut this piece right here off. Um, for the people that don't know, I'm, I'm gonna show you how to, how to do this because you probably, if I can find my mark. Uh, for, this is for the ones that don't know. You just take this piece of foam and you stick it up here like this and you put the bottom of it at the bottom of this. You take your little marker and you mark it just like this. You put your mark on it, then you take and cut that out. So normally I would probably just go ahead and just cut it out without ever doing that. But if you're learning, then you need to know that. That way you can cut your shape just like this and stick it right back in that hole. While that's drying, I'll take and move this right here. Right here. Just put it like this. Get the spring bed. I'm going to say it's going to go just like this. What it does is just hook over the edge. Take the springs. A screwdriver works pretty good. A pick works pretty good. Well, thank, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, this is the way you do it. You just hook your springs in here. And, uh, you, put, you put this over the edge like this. Because there's no way that you're going to pull that spring. It's so tight. There's just no way. So you just go over the edge like this. Just like that. I don't know if y'all seen that, but you'll see the next one. So I got about I got about ten of them or so to put on. So they go on pretty easy. They're not real, real hard. They do have a certain way to go though. That long end right here goes to the back. I guess if you took it apart, you'd, you'd know that. But. You know, I'm sorry it's so late, but things just work out like this sometimes.
if this spring bed messes up, what you do is you take a uh, you take a, a make a trampoline, what they call a trampoline. That's what I call it anyway. Alright, we set this out of the way. We let that dry. I use that cover right here as my pattern. Just stick this piece right here in here. You don't have to go too far in. If you don't have a grinder, you don't have to grind it. All you got to do is just cut it off. I've been told I could carve a turkey. But I believe, uh, I believe I could too. little old bitty hole right there probably don't matter too much you could have probably went over that right there I might could have took and glued it together because foam will stretch I might could have glued it together but the right way to do it is to cut it out and make it just like this right here foam right there it gets like dead you can look on the back side and see it's kind of brown looking <laughs> uh, like that it's just a little dark but it gets dead it's, it gets bad so I always cut it out I didn't have to paint that frame I didn't have to do none of that stuff like that but I just I, I just don't do the I got it apart most of the times so I just try to fix it right yeah everybody's probably asleep y'all might be the only ones up all right this when this guy brought this thing here it had one of these missing and you can tell he already has some duct tape on it it's kind of sticky I found this one but I didn't have the base part, so I just made that piece and it fits on here like this to hold it in place. You hear it click, you hear it? So that's just to hold it in place. This one, it's got a different kind on it. They are, they're a little bit of a pain to get off without breaking. And that might be why them right here is kind of messed up because they could have broke. How many people watch Stephen building his house today? These are kind of hard to get off. Uh, it's kind of take your time getting that off. Like I said, they will break if you can just jump one over at the time. Like this. Like that. Keep up with that ring. All right, here we go. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, is uh, 
try to move some of the stuff out of the way. When you do something like this, you probably need to know about what it, you know, if, if you're in another city or something, you might want to know what this costs. So a job like this usually runs around, I'm sweating. A job like this usually runs around 500 bucks or the whole bottle. Um, the materials and stuff is drove the price up. So everything seems like, everything seems like it's going up. Uh, this right here is half inch pink scrim back pad. I've used uncountable amounts of this. This roll right here is about 150 bucks, and then you got to pay shipping on it. So. If you're in the business, that's probably what you're going to pay for. I try to buy up several rolls when I buy it. Uh, anyway, it's too. The seat's too wide to go across the row, like from side to side. I think this is like maybe, what is that, 48. So that's what, 50 something inches wide. So what I do is I stick this up here like this. That's my, that's my piece that I'm gonna pad. And this is the best. That pink right there, it's, you can't buy none, it's actually no better than that. That's usually about 24, 25 inches, so that's 25. So we're just going to make it a little bit bigger. I'll make it 26. Just mark it 26 inches. I'm gonna use that piece right there, right here, as a pattern. Once I get it all done, because it, it ain't in that bad of shape and it did fit good. Hey everybody, I do have the air conditioner on. But it's too hot. Maybe I need to turn the fan on. Uh, earlier today, I took this piece right here and I put it in the washing machine and I washed it and and hung it out to dry. So it's it just had so much dirt in it. And if you and if you sew with your sewing machine with this right here and it starts skipping and starts acting up, most of the time it's from the dirt that comes off of this carpet. 
Always remember, try to clean that carpet before you stick it up under your sewing machine because it, it will cause you a whole bunch of headaches. Uh, see, I made that a little bit longer. I'm going to explain to you why I made it this much longer. Uh, if you see, I made it a little bit longer. And the reason I did it is because whenever I, when I sew this, when I sew these pleats in here, it's going to draw this material up. So once I sew these in, then I'll go back and trim it. Okay. I didn't have this material, but if you look, I did match it up real, real close, so it's like this, that color. It's amazing when you got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of yards and you don't have what you need. But it, it happens. Ah, so there's our material. I'm just going to take and trim it. Uh, so we got that much left that's over there to make the boxing and stuff like that out of. You always fold it back halfway like that. So you can uh, so it won't move. You want to know that you're getting it in the center. Careful with this gun, it will blow this head back over like that, and you'll get it on the front side. Be not careful. Let me move that material a little bit wider. Right there, I'm just gonna, I never square it.
glue on it, you can take and rub it off with your finger like this. Ah, right, here we go. You don't put this up here to cut it. I'm just going to put it up here to line it up and mark it. I'm going to put it from the back side. So I'm going to mark it from the back side. You just take your marker. Hey, Jody. Hey, Helen. Uh, just take your marker like this, like this. Just put your dot on it. Come right here, mark it on the back side. It's not going to move a whole lot because it's not a lot of lines. That's just four and four. So it's not going to, it's not going to go, it's not going to draw us a whole lot. Take your ruler, straight edge ruler. wide as my ruler so I really didn't just line up the ruler. Uh, I've watched a bunch of videos on here on how people try to teach other people how to do it and it's just they do it not my style I mean they just do it a different way it's kind of like I guess everybody's got handwriting different on your fingers like that, use them like that. Most of the time I don't use these snippers. I'm just so used to scissors. Yeah. Uh, first thing you want to do before you start sewing is you want to make sure if you got enough thread because you don't want to run out halfway and have to lift your hook, uh, I mean your foot up and how to pull the thread through and then start it back. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but always, always check your bobbin. And if it's low like this, that is pretty low. Uh, you, I always just put mine up here and just spin it off, spin it off if it's got some on it. That's not a whole lot, so it, I could have probably got a couple, a couple of runs out of it maybe. Um, I 
this bobbin right here don't have a whole lot on it, so I'm going to swap it out pretty quick. But it's got a little bit. I can make a couple of runs, two or three runs with it. But it's probably enough for me to wind a bobbin. You can buy these bobbins. Already wound. bunch of bobbins and that one right here is pretty big it's pretty wide and uh, a supplier sold them to me gave me such a deal on it I just couldn't turn them down so I just rewind it. it ain't a whole lot of trouble to do it I made a, I made a little stand back here to hold the uh, thread You know, when I learned this right here, nobody had, I had, didn't have no help, nobody showed me. So. Hopefully, some of this right here y'all can pick up. Maybe the head. can turn your sewing machine down to where it barely moves. A lot of people do that. I don't have no problem with that. If that's what you like. I never turned mine down. I just learned with it. Standard, normal, like where it said at. on something like over there it did hit on that weight so if it hits on something it can throw you off and make you uh, so a crooked line so I'm gonna move some of this stuff here because we sure don't want to say no crooked line I don't have no extra material, so I can't make a mistake. Ain't that song. I ordered just no. If I thought another one was going to come in next week, I would have ordered more, but... this this way, this away, back, this away, it would make this material right here wrinkle. And it might put a line in. That's why I always sew it backwards like this right here. Where I roll it up and it's not gonna put no wrinkle on the front side. When you, when you start off, and just say you start off, you have this hook right here at the top. 
it's always going to go down. If you have it down at the bottom, unless you hold the thread, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pull that thread right out of your needle. Just so you know. that right here real good you don't glue it like real good and you're sewing and you turn it around backwards and you just say you just say I didn't finish this line right here and I'm sewing it and I turn it around to do this line right here sometimes it, if you don't have it glue good it'll wrinkle it'll make it go it'll it'll put lines in it. maybe I'd have to show you what I'm talking about it don't look good See how I run out? Uh, I didn't even wind my bob. I don't know what I was doing. Could have pulled it through. Well, I did the wrong one. I could have pulled it through. Hey, y'all, it's late. and run out. Remember we talked about that when I first started? I must have thought they were more on that bobbin than what they was, but I, I, I just knew that it would probably run out. just snip it a little along right at about every inch or so where I can pull the stitches out. And then I started cutting on this one. <laughs> so I'm going to have to pull both of them. Just recently. 
start on it. Nobody likes to make a mistake, y'all, but it's going to happen if you do this that work. Just had to pull them threads out and have to do it by hand because I ain't never found another way to do it any better than that. And, I, I, and this one was all right. I didn't have to pull it out, but it just worked out to where I had to. Uh, I started on the wrong one. I didn't even look over there to see if it was where it stopped at. Alright. Here we go. Always go on the top side, make sure that you got all your stitches and stuff out. going to sew it right back in the same holes that it was in. I can see where the stitch I can see where the stitch holes are in that hole. Now we're back to square one. I got the one, two, three, four, five lines to sew. So here we go. Starting all back. Seems like starting all back over. And that's how that's how quick it can slow you down if you make that mistake. Oh. 
All right, now we're all sewed up as far as get, having the pleats and stuff in the line. So we'll come right back over here and we'll do it, cut it out. Ah, right, so here we go. It don't matter that I'm cutting it out backwards, like putting this right here face down to here, because this side, this side, is the same as the other side. I don't know if you knew that. Alright, so here we go. I'm just going to put this here. This has got to be a half inch, half inch bigger. So I'm not gonna cut it out exactly like it is. I got to come out here and make it a little bit bigger. So it's gonna be what I use to sew it together with. Okay, here we go. This looks to me like it's a little bit crooked, like right through here. It just looks a little crooked. Like the seats might have been pulled. So what I'm gonna do is, is uh, I got my line down here. So I'm gonna come just like this. Straighten that up. Like that. It didn't give me a whole lot more right in here, but it gave me a little bit. I'm gonna come right in here. Go ahead and mark these. Uh, what I do is, is I usually just uh, sew around. A lot of people don't. You can just cut that and sew it, but I don't. I usually sew it back around it. What is it? They say six one way and half a dozen of the other, so just.
this is where the seat uh, hinge goes through here. you what I just done that way you know all I did was just sew around it just sew around the edge um, these these right here go around the hinges I just sewed around that right there it's just my way you don't have to do it that way uh, so now I just cut that out Sometimes I cut this, I cut it out first and then sew around it. You can do it either way. These right here, that's where the plate, where the, uh, where your seat belt goes to. I am going to check that like this right here and make sure they're just right. And they are. I always take a block like this, stick under here. Then you just take the cut it out or through the four corners. Uh, so there's the there's the holes for the uh That's the hole for the seat belts. I'm going to check this one to make sure it's the right size. And it, it don't look like it's quite, it don't look like it's quite big enough. Like I might say it's quite big enough. That does, it looks a little bigger. So these right here, you cut them out like this. That's where your hinge goes through there, like that. I always sew something around there, like a like a piece of uh, material. 
just to finish it so I can make it look good. Uh, so that's halfway done. So we got this much right here done. Now, all these little pieces like this right here, the boxing, that's what I'm going to cut out. And I'm going to cut it out pretty quick. Uh, you see how this is folding in, like it ain't laying down? All you gotta do, come in here and make it lay down. Just give it some relief points like that. And now it'll lay down. Like that. Because you need to hold, you need to know how wide that piece right there is. Here we go. This piece right here is the same as this piece right here. So both sides, this side, the right and the left side on this seat right here are the same. So what I'm gonna do is cut this piece right here out. Always fold it over. Make sure you got the same angle on it, and that is. I'm gonna find halfway on the top, and I'm gonna find halfway on the bottom. All right, now I take this piece right here, cut it out. Got to remember, you see how I shorten them lines, went in here and went in there a little bit, so you got to remember where you at and what lines you don't fit. You might have to X them lines out, like go on here and just X them out like that so you don't cut them if you can't remember. If you miss, if you mess cut the wrong, uh, like the wrong piece. Just so you mess up and you cut the wrong piece, it could, it could cost you, you could make a $50 mistake, you know. You see how I'm turning this piece around backwards right here? The face is up, and I got it this inside to the inside. That's pretty important. Every person that I've ever trained has usually cut out two or three of these right here. And and we only needed like 
the opposite side. It takes a while to get used to cut opposites. So we got all, all the uh, boxing cut out. I'm going to cut this right here out. If you see right here, I left this piece right here on. That tail right there that goes on the uh, side lets you know where to hook it. The reason I done that was because I'm going to do it just like this right here. I'm going to mark it. Let's me know exactly where to put it. So I'll come right here and I'll put me a little notch. And I'll come up here and I'll put me another little notch. That lets me know where that lit, I call it listing. That's what I'm going to put right back on here. But first, I'm going to come right over here and I'm going to transfer these marks over to this piece. Right there. And right there, because they're both the same. To make this curve right here, if you look, you can see right there that the factory come in here and they put a notch. Because it's such an angle, they put a notch and so where it would go back up. Alright, give me just a second. I'm going to cut this piece right here off. Right. Just like this. I got this, I got this. It don't have a front and rear, it's the same width all the way down. This right here went on the back side, so I got I do have to uh, put that back on the carpet, so I got to cut a couple of these right here out. was just two little pieces. It didn't take with a minute to cut it out. Um, this goes on the uh, on the carpet. These pieces right here. On. So these pieces right here. Up. So this piece right here. Up. So listen on this right here. There's the carpet right here. So we're gonna do all this right here real quick. Oh. Hey y'all, that's my pile of scissors right there. I ain't sharpened them yet. So anyway, we'll come right here, right here. I'll lower you back down.
Yeah. Okay, we got these pieces right here. Right, this is just like a puzzle, you know. But if you put the puzzle together like a Rubik's cube, if you put that puzzle together a whole bunch of times, it just gets easier. Alright, so I know this piece right here went around I'm thinking that piece went over here. Yeah, just like that. Alright. So all I'm gonna do is just sew these right here together. What you do is you just you put a piece together here, you put a piece together there, it goes together like like a puzzle. You can't sometimes you can't put one piece before you get the other piece. Alright, so there's the carpet. We'll say that that goes on the tail of the feet, and I will explain to you how it goes and in the order that it goes in. Alright, this right here. Uh, front part of the boxing. It looks like I sew all these. All these pieces right here has got to be sewed on first. This piece right here has got to be sewed first before. goes like this, this right over here goes just like this. cut a couple of pieces because it, it, did, it didn't have a top stitch on it. Put one on it and make that lay down a little bit. But what I'm gonna do is, is I'm just gonna put the, I'm gonna put the listing across the front of it. right back on here. It's a real tough piece, hard to tear.
take you a little piece of vine line right here. I'll just put it in a strip. Fold it over the edge. Do the same thing. That's it. Then I'll take and put this piece right here. It's a listing piece. It goes right here on the side. These pieces right here, this piece is the last is the last piece to be set onto the seat. So I'm gonna come right here. I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the uh, the roller pleated part right here. I'm gonna get this piece. These. These pieces right here need a little bit sewed around it. I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. All you do, come right here just like this. Uh, that's just face to face, just like that. Face to face, I mean this part right here is facing that, and you see how I sewed it. So I now I want, all I'm gonna do is take and turn this piece right here back around like this, and I'm gonna put this top stitch all the way around. I know, I know if you don't know nothing about it, holster work, I'm probably talking foreign language to you. And, uh, Show you what I'm doing with my camera skills. I don't have no cameraman or nothing. So it's okay. So I'm gonna show you. This right here. All right. See, I just turned it inside out. I sewed it on like this, face to face. Then I just rolled it over, and it gave it the hinged edge. If that makes any sense. And then now. This won't just split easy, you know. It's, it's got that piece on there. <laughs> so, okay, what we're gonna do? I'm gonna do this side right here now. A lot of people say I make this look real easy, uh, but and, and maybe maybe I do. He watched me do this out here for a couple of hours one day and he went and bought him a sewing machine and, and it took this guy's Harley Davidson seat apart. Don't cover. And he said, man, the sewing machine, something wrong with it. So I went and checked it and there wasn't nothing wrong with it. And I wound up having to do that guy's uh, fix that guy's little seat. It's 
best to kind of learn and to live alone, like what I'm trying to show you, like that's right here before you ever get into something that could be complicated. You see it's just hemmed around the edge. It is pretty neat. Uh, this piece right here, this piece of carpet, goes on here first. The reason it goes on there first is because whenever you got to have, you got to take so that edge around here. So this, this carpet's got to go on here now. Probably a good idea to find your center on this carpet, like this. There it is. It looks like it might have had a little notch in it. It does now. All right. You come right here. Find your center. There it is right there. That way when you sew this on, it's not going to be one way or the other, from one side to the other. So you line that right there up in the center. Come right here. You pull this over, just like this, to the edge, and it goes all the way to the edge. you need to come over here and check it and make sure that you're right here where you're supposed to be. It's easy. It's easy to get that mark right there off. So if you don't have that mark right here lined up, if you're a half inch over this away, then you're going to be an inch over when you get to this side. If you're a half inch too short, you're probably going to be a, a little bit more than a half inch, or maybe, by the time you get there. That's real important. A lot of people will start right in the middle, and they'll sew that way, and then they'll turn around and sew back this way. So you can do it. You don't, you don't have to do my technique every time. Uh, I'm, I mean, I, every, just like somebody's handwriting. I can tell pretty much who around here does what work by the work by their work. All right, so we got this piece right here sewed back on. Now, the next thing is to sew that box and around the edge. That's pretty important that that box and right there be uh, lined up just right. When I folded it a while ago, I seen that it was right here in the center, right here. In the center of that line on that side. Uh, I ain't never seen a lot, I haven't, I haven't never seen a lot of people uh, do it this way, the way I do it, like, like this right here. Uh, if you got your way, if, I mean, if you're in this business and you already got your way, then, then it, it, it don't. You don't have to do it this way. A friend of mine, he's been doing it uh, 10 years longer than I have. And he'll start here in the center, and he'll sew that way, and then he'll turn the cover back over, and he'll sew that way. I've never done it that way. So this is, I've always went this way. Like I've always pulled it around like this. Always. And, and uh, but if, if you can't, I don't want to turn the camera over. If you can't get it in line, um, then you might want to uh, do it the the other the other way, you know. Uh, 
I'm not going to put a French seam on this seat. I'm going to put just the top of this on it. Come right here. I'm going to show you where that's at. All right. Here's my mark. Here's my notch right here. See it? There's my notch down here. <clears throat> there it is right there. <clears throat> so you can see it is lined up right here. Hey, y'all. That's real important that it's lined up. If it's not lined up, it can it can cause you a whole lot of it, your seat cover ain't gonna fit right. It's gonna fit uh, really crappy bad, and and you're gonna be saying, "My God, what happened? How did this happen? Why ain't it working? Why ain't it fit?" If you're in furniture, it's a lot different. But an automobile, it's got to be just right. So that's sewed on. All the boxing sewed on. See it? I ain't put the top stitch on it, but I am. It ain't gonna take me but just a minute to do it. As a matter of fact, this thing had a top stitch on it, but it also had another stitch that was just sewed into the cover. And it was fake. It did not have a real. It didn't have a real top stitch in it. It was fake. It didn't do nothing. It was just the look to make it look like it had a print stain. That's why I'm just putting the top stitch on. It. Hold on, I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. Maybe. Maybe you can see. All right. This, this has to be folded to the outside. It's got to lay down like this. And then this is folded over to where you catch that piece. If that makes any sense. You know, you got it all folded over to where it, where it catches this piece up under here. So you pull it out like this. Hey y'all, they make a foot for doing that too. I'll show you what one looks like. It's uh this they make a foot for doing that that right here lines your seam up and then that's a lineup tool right here and then your needle goes right here to make sure that you get that it just right. I've done this so long I can kind of do it without without it so but if you if it had to be perfect oh my gosh I don't run out again but it ain't bad over here because I can't just start right back over. Right here. Alright, I 
I'll just swap this bobbin out. is when I do this right here I got to get it right back in the same seat hole. All right, so that's that's the way that you do it. That's the way you sew it. I don't know if you can see through me with me doing like that, but you know you got to kind of shrug your shoulders a little bit. Do this. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna put this thing together. I'm gonna show you how it fits. Probably gonna take it back off and uh, and uh, put the gushings in it but it is kind of late i'm gonna show you how 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 it works how, how it goes together show you that it fits um like i said the seat is is uh i made that little piece of plastic to go on there because that piece right here was broke that's the original you see that one's a lot darker than that one but I had, I had this one from, from who knows how long ago. I'm going to show you what I was talking about, about the fake, the fake top stitch. Uh, that top stitch that was in this cover right here, it did nothing. All it was was for little. Like a bunch of this stuff that they make nowadays, it's just the look. The hard and stuff like that. Steam this phone a little bit. Try to uh, bring back the light. Uh, so, so what I'm gonna do is, is uh, I'm gonna back you up a little bit. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is, is uh, just slide this cover on.
I always stick my hand in there and push out with that, like that, with that cover and line it up. Sometimes it's real tight, y'all. Right? I'm going to explain some of the stuff what I was just doing. When I was pushing this over right here, I was holding that material together like this. I had to hold it together because I was pushing it so hard it could split the material. Right here, it would, it would tear it. So sometimes you got to help hold it together to get that to get that fit and it is tight once i hog ring it down now i am going to take it back off right here i might could reach my hand back up under here like this and probably could and just put these pieces right here on but that's the way it looks right there I'll, I'll work the side right here out and if it's got any places on it like a little wrinkle or whatever like that I'm gonna take a steamer and I'm gonna steam it so what time is it 135 right, I started on it I started on it at 12 o'clock what 11 o'clock. Hour and 35 minutes ago. Okay. Started on an hour and 35 minutes ago. That's how long it took me to do the job. Uh, I probably, probably got Probably got about a hundred dollars or so in it, maybe somewhere around there. But you, but you seen that I cut that foam out and I fixed that. I fixed the frame. I went, I welded the frame up. So I, I did, I did a bunch, I did a bunch of little odd and end things to bring it back to life where it was supposed to be. And uh, so it's. It's, it's not it's not all profit but um, I mean another five hundred dollars to go to the grocery store with so if you want if you want to learn if you like it if you think you might pick up something that you that you're working on or if you like working on old cars if you like working on old cars the old ones are a lot different than the new ones that's for sure. I think they're built better.
tell you the truth. But got me some new pliers, so I cut some hard rings out today. Uh, it's uh, I I think I think overall I think I think it looks pretty good. Overall, it don't look too bad. Kind of like the original. That's what it was supposed to be. It was like the original. I'll go back and hog ring it on. That's no that's no biggie. And thanks everybody for uh for watching. It's it's what one one thirty seven. No, that's the time. So you said ninety minutes. So anyway. If you, if you kind of like what you see and just kind of like and subscribe and next time I do something I'll probably uh, this right here one of these I may do something like this right here tomorrow that's off of a it's off the of Camry you see I write the customer's name <laughs> I write the customer's name on the seats just to keep up with it but uh, that thing's all busted up hey that's about 75 bucks to cover. So, you know, you might want to, if you can save $75, that's 75 to the good. So that's what I'm saying is, um, so I'll go work out, do my little workout and I'll, uh, might see y'all a little bit later. Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.